everybody. So today what I'm working on is actually a pretty um, challenging kind of issue for a lot of people. So this girl, she's in a nice, uh, she's in a nice show coat. Problem is, I don't have anywhere to show her right now. And the next time I plan to show her is in four weeks and then again in six weeks. And in four to six weeks, this nice show jacket will be too big, too long, too bushy in a lot of places. And it's not real obvious yet. So most people wouldn't see it until a week or two ahead Maybe they've already made their entries and then they uh, start to do their show prep and go, oh my gosh, there's the, like, especially the neck or the shoulders or the rear back here, it's all puffy. What do I do? And then they strip the hair down then and they end up with holes or they end up with areas that are bare and it, it, it's not consistent um, and it doesn't look good. It's not competitive. So... From experience, I know I have to address this now, four to six weeks ahead. And it's not the easiest to do because it's hard to see the layers because they're not too much longer. Um, and so I have to take a, an approach that I've learned over the years and I call it kind of working from the outside in. So I work on the outline, the silhouette first. And then I work my way in to some of these other areas where at the moment, I don't know what I would need to take off. So when I first look at her, I can see, um, and the last time I worked with her was about a month ago. I can see that there's a long layer on the top of her head and just a new little layer starting to sprout underneath. And that, new little layer that's starting to sprout underneath is going to be the basis for, um, you know, kind of the, the skull cap, the jacket on the top of the head. And I'd like that to look really crisp and nice and um, tight to the head with a nice salt and pepper because that really helps highlight the texture of the coat. Um, so I'm going to need to strip that down. And the neck is a place, neck and shoulders is a place where a lot of dogs get bushy um, and kind of get an appearance of loaded shoulders when the hair here gets too, gets too long. So I definitely want to do something about that a little bit now. And I see that there is a layer coming in underneath the longer hair on her, on her, uh, her forearms here, her upper arm here. And so that means, okay, then I could take a bit of a layer off and kind of go through that same process all the way back here and on the rear. Um, you know, here's an area at the base of the tail, which I've worked in the past uh, to give her a nice tail set in the ring. And um, that's getting a little long and bushy. The tail is getting a little overgrown and here on the hips, I can see that there's a, a layer that's starting to get a little out of control. Um, now here's part of the tricky part. Since it takes about six weeks for new hair to sprout, everything I pull off today, except maybe the top of the head, maybe some of the tail, everything I pull down today None of it will be back in time for the shows that I'm looking at in a month, uh, four and six weeks. It will just be starting to sprout at the end of that time because it takes six weeks for the hair to sprout, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I know. So I have to be mindful now of stripping and putting holes in because like I said, nothing I strip out now will grow back in until after these upcoming shows of mine. So, I'm gonna start working the neck area because that's the bushiest. That's the area 
that on most dogs, we want to keep the tightest. And so we need to uh, do more rotating, do more rolling. Um, the more often you rotate the coat, the more often you, you pull the long stuff down, the more consistent the dog's appearance will be. That's part of why show dogs look really good when they're being campaigned is because if they're out every couple of weeks, their grooming's getting tweaked every couple of weeks. So it, it really gets to be um, perfect for that dog. As we tweak for confirmation, maybe it's a dog that's got a, you know, a shorter neck, then maybe that person, they keep the neck in a tighter jacket to, um, to give the neck as much length as possible. Maybe it's a dog, stand up on, who's a little long compared to uh, another dog. Well, that might be a dog where the, they might wanna actually grow in the hair from here to here. So that kind of gives an optical illusion of the back starting a little, a little farther back. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do with grooming that accentuate the virtues of your dog. So it's really important to know what your virtues are. And there's a lot of grooming that can be done to, you know, to camouflage faults. You, you can't make an ugly dog into a, a best in show winner, but you might be able to do some things um, to make it less obvious for the judge to see something that maybe isn't isn't the dog's best virtue. Stand up, honey. Uh, there's a bushy spot right here. I'm just lifting the coat up a little at a time and, uh, and then pulling on just the layer, carefully just the layer that's the longest. I don't, I definitely at this point don't want to be digging in to the next layer underneath because that's going to make uh, a hole for sure that will last not just until for six weeks until this hair sprouts again, but as this, the next layer grows in, it'll also have a hole in it because of being pulled out. Okay. Now, one of the things that could help me to differentiate these layers, because part of the challenge here is differentiating the layers. They're only different by, as I lift this coat up and look at it, the longest layer is only maybe a half an inch at most longer than the layer underneath. So that makes it a pretty exacting um, process if you're just gonna lift up the hair and pull just a tiny bit at a time and try not to get the layer underneath. So this is a, a dog that I might do the hack on where I bathe the dog, I bathe the coat because, uh, and then I let it dry completely because that will lift the layers apart and will make it easier for me to tell which layer is which, which will make it more effective for me to pull. This is definitely a place and a time where you have to be very mindful of what you're, what you're pulling, what you're doing. You can't get into a kind of a, a rote, just, oh, here's how I pull hair and expect to get re good results because it's variable on every part of the dog at this point when you're rotating the coat, what needs to come off next. You, you want to be mindful of what your dog's virtues are, what, uh, what their faults are, and not, not create the appearance of faults that aren't there. That's part of why we don't want the neck and the shoulder to get too, too bushy, too long, because that will shorten the neck on this girl and make, make her look like she has a fault she doesn't have. She's nice and square, so that means sometimes we get a little challenged by the neck not being super 
super long. Um, you know, having a nice long neck is, is really attractive in a standard schnauzer, but then sometimes you've got to look at the length of the body because you might have had to, you, that dog to have a nice long neck with a nice arch. It might mean the dog is long and I'd rather have a square dog with a little bit shorter neck than a beautiful neck dog that's too long. Um, the, the square profile is such a, an iconic part of what makes a schnauzer a schnauzer. Okay, um, so this is gonna take me a while and I think I am definitely gonna try bathing her to lift some of this coat up so that um, it'll make it easier to tell these layers apart especially on the neck and the shoulders where where I just have to be careful. Um, one last thing, it's very tempting to look at the area in the middle, like down in this area and say, oh, well, that part of the coat's not too long. I don't have to touch that. That's only true if you know that you're not gonna be showing again after the four to six weeks. This grows in real slow, but if you don't do the maintenance on a little bit of rotating here, you know, frequently, what's gonna happen is you'll get to a point where it's finally grown out way too long and you have no choice but to pull it all down. And if you haven't been maintaining the areas that grow slowly, you're gonna pull this center section down, have nothing left, and it's the slowest section and it'll be three months before you've got nice hair here again. And that might really mess up the timing of what you're planning for showing. So I am gonna go ahead and work, work down here just a little. And when I get down here, I can see that there are a few, a few hairs that are a little bit longer than everywhere else. I'm not trying to make this uh, you know, area bare, because like I said, in four to six weeks, she's going to be showing. But I do want to pull just a little bit of hair to make sure that there's always another layer growing in underneath. Just a little. I'm using a stone for this because I don't want to break this hair. I don't want to break any hair, but I especially don't want to break the hair here because um, you need that really nice salt and pepper to blend down into the skirt. Okay, that's probably all I need to do in this area just to make sure there's still coat coming in. After I, uh, after I bathe her and let her dry, if there's anything, that, any wispy stuff that's still standing up right there, then I will, um, I'll address it then. All right. Thanks, honey.